Today on the do-it-yourself dad channel, on my truck I've got three of these great 12 volt socket stern accessories, but the problem is these are not switched, they're hot all the time. So we're going to be adding two more sockets right here, down here on this blank panel that are going to be controlled by the ignition. And all you're going to need is this part and a few other little things, you can get this whole thing done for about $10. Stay tuned. So link down in the description below is this little guy. These are um, two 12 volt sockets here. These are um, marine ones, so they actually have a little flip up seal. But what I liked about these is you can mount them into the dash and they're very solid. So if you have a piece of uh, equipment, like maybe a cell phone charger that actually holds the phone that needs something sturdy, this is a great one. And this is not that expensive. So this is linked down in the description below. These are gonna come with uh, some of these little guys. These slip onto the back. But what it doesn't come with is wire. So you're gonna to wanna to pick up some wire and I've got some links for this in, in the description down below. And then you'll probably also need some tools. You'll need a, a crimper like this. And depending upon how you do it, you're gonna want some extra little pieces here. And uh, all these are pretty inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon real cheap. And uh, the one other thing that's not shown here is a Adafuse. And we showed that in one of the previous episodes where we installed a backup camera and I've got that link down in the description below as well. So let's start by taking off that panel and measuring things out. So every car is a little bit different so take a look around your car. On the case of my truck here we've got these up here and I have this blank panel down below and it's got a large area behind it and that's important because those sockets are a little bit thick so you want to make sure that it will clear when you put everything back together. So find a spot in your car that you want to put them on and then you're going to want to remove the panel and uh, if you have a car that's uh, different than my truck you can take a look around online. There will be uh, instructions on how to remove the different panels. In the case of my truck, there's two screws down here and this whole panel comes out. So we're gonna take this panel out and bring it over to the workbench. All right, so now we just pick a location on this panel. We wanna flip it over and make sure that there is clearance behind the panel. And these, uh, these pieces do space off, so it's pretty easy to determine here with it like that, that it will clear. But you do wanna confirm that this will clear anything that's inside your dash so you're not gonna be uh, bending things when you put it all back together. So let's mark that out, we'll cut it out, and put it back together. Having a rotary tool isn't necessary to do this, but it is really helpful to get the job done quick. You can also do it with a hole saw or a jigsaw or any other cutting device. You do want to make the holes pretty tight um, when you do these because you just want to have a lot of structure back here to support what you're putting in place. So we're going to thread these guys back through. And then in the case of this one, we're going to flip it back over and we have these little retaining rings here. And these guys thread back down in place. And there's just one of the uh, couple steps you use to hold everything in place here. So there we go, we've got the retaining rings right in place. And then this kit actually also came with some screws you can use to screw it in there too. Um, if you have the retaining rings in place, you may or may not need the screws. Um, but if you don't use them, you're going to have these holes right there. So we're going to fill those in anyway. We're going we're gonna to screw the whole thing together and make it nice and firm and solid. So there we go. We've got it all mounted up nice and clean. You've got these nice little pull-ups right here. And uh, now we're going to get onto the wiring of this. The wiring on this is pretty simple. If you look on the back of here, you've got your positives, which is that center post, and your negatives, or ground, which is that outer post. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire positive to positive, and then out to a power source, and then negative to negative, 
and then out to a ground. So we're going to use um, some wire and some of these little crimp on connectors to make all those connections. Uh, so here we go. All right, so now we got those crimped. We have a nice strong connection there. So we are going to go negative to negative. And then this one will lead off to ground. And we're going to do the same thing for our positives. Okay, so our positives now are going to come in here. I wound up having to use a blue one on this one because the, uh, the core is a little bit bigger to fit both wires in. So um, our positive here is going to jump from the positive on one here to the positive on the next one. And now this part is wired up, so now we're going to move it over to the truck. So this is the void now where that panel is going to be, and those pieces are actually going to fit in right about here. So now we have to figure out the route that the wires are going to take to get over to the fuse box. And in my case, the fuse box is over here to the left of my steering column. So we need to find a space, and I got a little space here that I think I'm going to run those wires through underneath my steering column here and over to the fuse box to get to the um, ADA circuit, and we'll show you that in a second. So we're going to start by just kind of starting to feed these things in, and then we're going to get this thing screwed in place. So we're back in the truck now, and uh, we've got the panel reinstalled. We've got the ground hooked up behind there. We found a screw that was um, into part of the frame of the dash, so that is a grounded. You want to make sure it's going into metal. So the ground is back there, and then we ran the positive all the way underneath here over to our fuse box. Now it's kind of a rat's nest of wires in here, but I do have uh, some room. And this is the little part that you're going to need. And this is the add a fuse or add a circuit. And what this does is this taps into where a fuse normally would be on your fuse panel. It has one fuse here and that covers that circuit. And then it has another fuse and that allows you to add a new circuit. So you want to go into your fuse panel, find a fuse. We're using this one right here that is powered off the ignition. So when the key is in the ignition and turned on, it's powered. When it's out, it's off. And that will make these sockets switchable. So you have a positive lead coming out of it. And that's coming down. Right now I have this just kind of zipped on, but we are going to um, add the power cable to that. And that is what's going to feed 12 volt DC to those sockets. So we'll start by taking this guy right here. And he is going to plug in to that open socket right there. So we used a simple crimp connector here to uh, crimp that on up to the fuse box. And now all we have to do is tuck this line, get it zip tied up out of the way so it's not going to interfere with any of our pedals. And with that, our 12 volt sockets over there are installed and ready to go. So now when you hop in your truck and put in your keys, all your 12 volt stuff will come on. And when you turn your truck off, it'll all turn off. So that way you won't accidentally kill your battery if you leave something like this or your chargers plugged in for several days between driving. So if this video helped you out at all, give me a great big thumbs up. Leave a comment down in the description below and check out the links for all the products here that we use today. And be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.